So that being in mind, I might ask you about that, Chris. Um, yeah, go for it. David's just gone to uh, number one in the world there in, in the T20 rankings that, that have just been released. Can you tell us, um, I suppose, how, how you see his return to the side and, and the form he's in and, and whether it might sort of now translate through to the next format? Yeah, I mean, obviously his form in T20 as it stands is phenomenal, really. Uh, and it seems to be keep getting better the more he bats, which is great. Um, and it's good to watch him. I mean, he's, he worked hard to get into the team, and when he's got his opportunity, he's taken it, uh, which has been superb to watch. And obviously, his record is brilliant at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, good on him. What do you reckon about his prospects of, of taking this form into be it 50 over cricket? And I wonder if uh, even even Test cricket is on the, the radar again for David. Like. When a, when a player gets into form, it can it can sort of click, can it, and and take them into a, a whole new area. Yeah, obviously he's, he is in great form, uh, but again, I mean the fifty over format is a tough team to get into. Uh, you know, which I believe has already been spoken around. Um, so he will, you know, I mean, if the opportunity comes around, I'm sure he'll grab it with both hands. But he, I mean, it may be a case if he has to wait for that opportunity because it is a tough team to get into. And, and where are you at with a couple of your uh, injuries and, and stuff in terms of this 50-over team? Obviously, yesterday, you were missing four four of your top six, really, your ideal top six for various reasons. Are you expecting Joss to be back, for example, and, and how's Owen looking? Yeah, uh, Joss will be back uh, in the bubble to join us at Manchester. I mean, sort of, barring sort of test results, not turning up on time or anything like that, really, he should be, he should be available to play. Owen, uh, obviously good news around his finger, uh, so touch wood, he will, he'll be fit as well. Uh, as you know, Milan has come in as a reserve, Roy has come through fit, so he will join the squad. Uh, and obviously, as you already know, Salt has come in as a reserve as well. Okay, uh, we'll move on to Will then. Thanks, uh, Roy. Hi, Chris. Your, your T20... Hi. Cricket is done for the summer now. Could you just give us a, an assessment of, of where, how your team's developed in those six matches, and particularly with the World T20 being your next big sort of white ball assignment? So just a sort of progress report there. Yeah, I mean, always areas to work on. Uh, you know, I, mean, I think we saw last night and Moen touched on it in his interview. From a fielding perspective, uh, it's certainly something we're going to work hard on. I think we can improve. You know, I mean, large in that. I think we could, you know, I mean, obviously we could do a lot better. Uh, I think the bowling got better as we went on. I thought, you know, sort of, obviously watching from afar the Pakistan series, because obviously uh, Forky took that for me. You know, I mean, again, we got better as we went on. But it's sort of to be expected. These guys had not played 2020, really, leading into that. So, you know, I mean, I think all sides have got better as have gone on the more we've played. Uh, but we've showed that, you know, we have got a powerful batting order. Uh, and we've stuck to his guns, which is good. You know, we play positive, aggressive, smart cricket, and we'll keep pushing that. You, you, you're sort of known in white ball cricket as a as a batting team, and you've that extraordinary top order in in 50 over cricket. But do you think in this Australia series, possibly the bowlers actually outshone the batsmen and showed that you've got a bit more about you, I suppose, as a team? I think the bowlers have done really well, and as I say, they, they got better as they went on. Uh, I mean. It was exciting to watch the pace of, of Wood and Archer in those games as well. You know, we'd see bowlers you know, consistently getting above 90 miles an hour, really. And obviously, they had Stark on their side as well. It was exciting. Rash doing his thing, really, sort of bamboozling people with his spin. Uh, so I think it does. I mean, it shows that we have got a, a core group that are very exciting and are very competitive. Uh, you know what I mean? So moving forward into those T20 World Cups, if we can just keep improving in. The areas of obviously they've spoken about like the, the fielding and keep improving our skills as a bowling unit, then yeah, I think we can drive forward nicely. Okay, Paul Newman, please. Chris, um, talking, oh. of, uh, talking of Rash there, uh, I think last time we spoke to you, uh, you, you were, we, we were asking you about him and Test cricket again, and uh, you said you'd like to, if there was any possibility of him being back in contention, I think you said you'd like to see him play some four day cricket first. Um, I wondered if you'd had that conversation with him. Now you're back in the same bubble as him or, and where you, where you see that situation at the moment. Because obviously he was brilliant again last night and a lot of people think, wouldn't it be great if he was um, playing Test cricket again? 
Yeah, I mean, my, my, you know, my sort of thoughts on that situation were the same. I would like to see him with a red ball in his hand. Uh, you know what I mean? Obviously, before we select him. Uh, conversations are ongoing. Uh, you know, I mean, it's sort of slowly, slowly. But what I don't want to do is sort of cloud what we're doing at the moment too much with sort of conversations outside of white ball at the moment. So, obviously, I've got another chat to have. Uh, but I would like to see him play red ball cricket if, was selecting, if possible. So you think that would effectively rule him out of this winter if you do go to Sri Lanka and India? Uh, maybe not. Let's uh, let's see. But, but, yeah, I mean, there's a possibility of uh, a red ball camp uh, with some competitive games on there. So yeah, there's only a possibility, mind you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. depending right. on what's happening around the world. But just finally on that, you do think he has the ap appetite to play red ball cricket again? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, very ongoing conversations with Rush, um, and I, I wouldn't want to cloud what we're doing too much. We've got a, a one day series to win first. Um, we'll hold those conversations. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Rob Johnson, please, Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, just wanted to ask about um, the middle order batting actually in, in 50 over and T20. I guess Joe played last night in the middle order and Tom Banton has batted there as well, neither of whom have really batted a lot there in their careers. Could you just explain the thought process behind giving those guys um, a chance in the middle order above players who? you know, might bat there for their counties more regularly? It's giving exposure to players. And sometimes, you know, when you've got to bat where the, you know, where the gaps appear, really. They are difficult sides to get into these white ball groups. We've got some great players in there already. I mean, some world-class white ball players in there. Um, and sometimes that's where the gaps open up. So, you know, when you have to take them. And uh, But we believe, I mean, top Tom has got a, a big future ahead of him. So as much exposure as we can give him can only be a good thing, really. And um, the same with Dennis. I was just going to ask about Tom actually over the the six games. What do you, what did you think of his performance? And I guess he did well in the final <coughs> one day or against Ireland as well. He did. He's learning over time. Uh, you know, I mean, he's young. He's an exciting talent. We can't expect things to go his way all the time. Uh, you know, I mean, we've got to sort of look at him with a, a bigger picture in mind. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hi Chris, so quite a few catches went down in the test series as well, uh, slips and the keeper and stuff. What can you do to uh, improve the fielding all around? What is, it? is it just basically lots of hard work? I think that's it, yeah. I think it is. Uh, obviously we have people looking at the fielding all the time to look at specific areas uh, and then we will drill hard on those areas and uh, you know, we continue to work hard and improve them. Are the players... A bit, bit weird, tired. I mean, it's been a long. I know it's been a, con, a, a contracted season, but they played a lot of cricket in a, in in the last few weeks in the bio bubble as well. I mean, are you sensing that the lads are a bit knackered? <clears throat> I think they've done exceptionally well. I think everybody has to be honest. I mean, there's been a lot of people, and I've said this before. There's a lot of people work very hard to to get. You know, I mean, this bubble on to get cricket on this summer, uh, whether that be from you know, I mean, the people at the ECB. Uh, to the hotel staff, to the ground staff, everybody. So I mean, it's a huge thank you to them uh, for getting this on. But it has been a long time, yeah. And, you know, I mean, as you've seen, we've moved people in and out of the bubble as we, we needed to. Uh, we've tried to look after people because it has been tough at times. Uh, but not to take away, you know, I mean, the quality of what's been delivered. I think it's been phenomenal uh, by everybody concerned. Is it going to be hard to raise the guys? I mean, they're facing coming Stark Hazelwood, three of the best bowlers in the world in the next few days. I mean, at the end of a long summer, is that going to be a big challenge? No, it's Australia. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I think they're all, listen, they're all up for it. They all want to play against Australia. I mean, Australia have brought a really good team over with them and it's always competitive. Um, so I'm looking forward to a good one-day series. Thank you. OK, we'll go with uh, three more. Gideon, Paul, and then we'll finish with Rory. Last one. Go ahead, Gideon. Uh, hi, Chris. Um, hi. Just wondering whether this ODI series gives more of a, a, a sort of potential for, for landing a few blows ahead of an Ashes series than a T20 would. Uh, it's always nice to win, to be honest. Um, I mean, the one thing that you know, I mean, everybody feels in the dressing room that any victory over Australia is great. Uh, like I said, they are a top side. Uh, they're very difficult to beat. So if we can do that, then brilliant. But yeah. Anything that we can get, you know, I mean, psychologically, it will be fantastic. Um, but one thing you can guarantee is every time they play, they'll come out fighting. So, you know, it's going to be a good game. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and just and one one more point if, if it's okay um does it i mean is it do you sense a, a sort of slight change in in mentality in, in being the target um as number one and world cups and you know world cup winners no no all to be honest we're just busy going about our business you know i mean trying to push the boundaries over trying trying to improve um uh, and you know i mean trying to keep sort of pushing forward our game plan really and getting better at it so we're sort of more concentrating on what we do thank you okay paul again and then rory to finish sorry chris i was just going to ask uh, did you say uh, david is on uh he's on a standby for the one day series now i, I didn't know that i don't didn't know if that yes, was he, made public. he's on the reserves yeah Oh, okay. And, and Jason is fit? or, or... Jason's fit and will come into the squad. So that could be a, a, another chance for David to, as Rory was saying earlier about him using this as a stepping stone almost, that could be, he's clearly on your radar for 50 overs again now as well. Yeah, well, he's been brought, like I say, he's been brought in, he's in great form. Uh, he's, he is on the reserve list at the moment. Uh, but, you know, I mean, things happen, he's there, isn't he? And sorry, just quickly, um, you were talking about how well people have done in the bubble and how demanding it's been. You know, we've seen footballers run into trouble with it in, in recent days. I'm not going to ask you to comment about them, but it, it just shows you, doesn't it, how, how hard this is. And you, you must be really pleased with how everybody's come through it because everybody appears to have been incredibly disciplined with this. It's, it has been mentally challenging. We heard that Joss hadn't seen his family for 10 weeks, which was why he missed last night, for instance. Do you, do you think, are you pleased with the way everybody's come through it? And, and do you think that they will be able to cope with this if this is the, the way we've got to do things for, for the foreseeable future? I think I am. I mean, to start with, I'm very proud of how everybody's conducted himself, to be honest. Uh, you know, I mean, for us to get where we are and, and to have the success that we've had this summer so far uh, has been a huge credit to, like I said, the players, to the staff, to everybody. I mean, all of us concerned. I mean, it's, you know, it's not been easy for anybody, has it really? I mean, you guys included. Um, so I think to achieve what we have as a group, I mean, all of us, I think is, is absolutely phenomenal, really, under the circumstances that we've had put in front of us. I think moving forward, if this is what we have again, uh, firstly, at least we know what to expect. Uh, secondly, you would hope that, you know I mean, potentially in the future, there's, we know a bit more about COVID and maybe, you know what I mean, things could be maybe a little bit less strict, but if this is what it is, then we've got to do it. I mean, we have to get cricket on. Uh, we have to keep the lights on, really. And if that's what is required, then we do it. It's as simple as that. Thank you. And Rory, please, to finish up. Just the last one, Chris, on um, on Joe Root's uh, role in the, in the 50 over team. Really, he, I suppose, he almost fulfills that that anchor role somewhat in the sort of Steve Smith vein. Is do, do you think he he can keep that clarity to continue doing that role when actually he really wants to break into that T20 team again? We know we know he's desperate to get in. Like, could it be hard for him to bat in that measured anchor way when when what he's trying to do is show you that he can do a lot more than that as well? No, I think he's very good at sort of keeping the two in separate, to be honest. Um, you're right, he is desperate to get in that 20 over team, and it's great, but you've got somebody of his calibre going away and, you know, I mean, what is play counter cricket, play the, in the T20 and, and show us what he could do. I thought it was superb from Joe. Uh, but I don't think he'll have any trouble fitting back into the role that he plays. He knows his role in that one-day team. It's a very important role. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he is the rock there, you know what I mean, in that role for us. Okay, just before we go, just to clarify on, on the changes to the squad, um, just so everybody's clear, uh, Jason Roy comes in to make it a 14-man squad. Darwin Milan is now a reserve, and Joe Denley's left the bubble and, and, and is headed back to Kent, so he's going to play some county cricket. So the two reserves from memory are Saki Mahmood and uh, Darwin Milan for, for this Salt. Salt. Oh, and Phil Salt, of course. Yeah, Phil Salt. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye.